New Vision Christian Center. Thank you. 
Lord, we ask that you watch over the speaker of the hour, replenish him each night after pouring out into us. We thank you for this revival. And we ask that you refill us so that we can go back out and speak of your glory, of your worthiness, of your grace. We praise you. We thank you. We lift you up. Amen. Right. And I'm also going to be reading Psalms 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the in, in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the, with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the tremble and the dance. Praise him with the string instrument and flute. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with the clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and the doers of his word. It's a Wednesday night. Some of us are a little tired. We ain't tired. We ain't tired. We tired. Amen. <laughs> but we know that God is so worthy. Is God not worthy all the time? Hallelujah. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. I enter every time I come into the house of the Lord. I'm coming with the praise on my lips. I'm coming in with my hands lifted. And I'm coming in with a very contrite spirit because I want God to move tonight. Anyone, anybody want God to move tonight? I want him to move. I want him to move in my finances. I want him to move in my future. I want God to do the miraculous. I want him to heal somebody. I want him to set somebody free. And it does not matter if you are in the house of God. God can still do it as you're watching. Amen. We do thank you for tuning in to be with us tonight to try to Superintendent William R. Ephraim in his absence. Can we put our hands together for our pastor? Amen. Our district missionary is district missionary Kanita Smith. Put your hands together for her in her absence. And we thank and praise God for the tribe captain, none other than Mother Dolores Blackwell. Can we put our hands together for her? Amen. The guest revivalist tonight is none other than my brother in the ministry, Minister Joshua Sales. Amen. Put your hands together for him. Amen. We're asking even at home that you continue to keep him lifted up in prayer. And while you're praying, before you start praying, let's go ahead and lift up a sound of praise. Amen. How many of you know that you are a soldier in the army of the Lord? Oh, Lord. Are you a soldier in the army of the Lord? Amen. We're going to be fighting on. Amen. We're going to fight on. We're going to fight through all the demons and the devils. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Put your hands together. Put those hands together. 
Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I need y'all to do something for me. I need y'all to do me a favor. I need everybody to take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath out. Take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath out. One more time. Take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath out. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. So, if everybody in here, I seen your shoulders go up, and I seen your shoulders come back down. I seen them go up, and I seen them come back down. I seen them go up one more time, and I seen them come back down. So the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. So if you have breath in your body, I need you to open up your mouth and send a shabak up to heaven. Come on, open your mouth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we worship you. God, we thank you. God, we give you the praise. God, we give you the honor. God, we exalt your name. God, we acknowledge the power that you have. You have power over the enemy. You have power over devils. And you've given us that same power to triumph over the enemy. So, God, we thank you. God, we lift your name up. God, we magnify you. God, we glorify you. It could have been us, but we're standing in the house of God. You allowed us to make it. God, we say thank you. Somebody say thank you. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. It's another day's journey, and I'm so glad to be here. Is there anybody glad in this house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Right before I bring uh, the Washington family up to do the do they dance. Uh, 2015, I was deployed for my fourth time. Um, and I was in an uncomfortable place. But how many of you know faith is the currency of heaven? You can't get nothing with God without faith. I think the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. So faith is the currency that gets God to move on your behalf. I don't care what's going on in your life. Little things, big things, small things, it is faith. It takes faith to move it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Wow. Glory be to God. If you catch on to what I just said, it, it'll move things in your life. Right. And I know I'm not the speaker, but faith, I, I, I know a little something about faith. I said I know a little something about faith. I said he brought me out three depl deployments. It took faith to get me there. Some didn't make it. Some didn't make it. But I made it. Not only I made it, but everybody that need my leadership came through too. We are standing here because we are working progress through faith. Somebody prayed you through here. Somebody got you here. I know these days are being hard, man, but just understand God is still yet on the throne. He sit high and look low. Nothing passes him by. 2015, as I was saying, I was in Iraq. Yeah. Maybe I was. I was somewhere. I don't know. They all run together now. But uh, this song, I sent to my wife and kids. I told them to make a dance to the song. It just moved me when I was there. And uh, it, it just blessed me so much. And they created a dance. So when I got back from my deployment, they did the dance for me. And hopefully this blesses y'all as well. Okay? So come on up, Washington family.
table. My goodness, I felt that. Amen. I didn't. I just want to feel. I don't know if anybody feel like I'm feeling. I've been working since early, early, early this morning, and I felt that song in my bones. He is able. That other song put a smile on my face. God bless you, I just, I'm just here. Say amen. 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 Moving on with the program. Introduction of the Revivalists, uh, Sister Kevin's Sales. Amen. Give her a hand clap as she comes forward. Take root, God. Remove what is not like you. 
Remove what's in us that's not like you. Remove what is in our minds that's not like you. Remove what's in our hearts that's not like you. Take the problems and push them out the door. The problems that we came in here with, let us leave it here and not take it home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Keep playing. I thank God for another year. Yeah. Man. That's a blessing all in itself. It is. I just got to celebrate my 37th birthday. Wow. And Man. truthfully, that was in June 16. That was a long time ago. But truthfully, I should have been made it past 18. Wow. Man, my God. That's it. That's real life. But I'm going to try not to get emotional about that because. Some of you may know about what I'm about to say. You don't know how it feels like when you have law enforcement from every department looking for you. And you're asking God, please don't let them kill me. Yes, yeah. yes, right. You don't know how it feels like to be in the car with a couple of guys and they get ready to do some dirt. And you're thinking, oh, I must do this. And God says, I told you to get out of the car. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's right. And if you don't get out, I'll make you get out. Most people don't know how it feels like to be threatened by God. When God says, if you don't obey what I just told you, I'm going to kill you. So I thank God for another year. I thank God for his goodness, grace, and mercy. And I made a promise to God that no matter what happens in my life, I will praise your name regardless of who is around me. And if I'm in a room full of silent people, if you need a voice to praise you, I'll do that. If you need hands to work, I'll do that. If you need feet to walk, I'll do that. If you need someone to praise and worship your name, I'll do that. So that's how I get my boldness. Because God put it in me. That you have to, you can't be a weak preacher up here. You can't. You can't be a professor of the a professor of the word of God and be weak and scared to profess the name of God and say, God, I'll praise you in the midst of, but yet you get scared because the pews are empty. I said something. Yeah. You can't sit here and get deterred just because there's no one sitting here. I'll preach to the wall if I have to. That's right. That's right. I'll preach to the streets if I have to. If no one else is here, then I'll take this right here and I'll sit on the side of the street and I'll repress the name of God if I have to. The word needs to be preached whether you like it or not. Someone has to hear the word because you don't know what people are going through every single day. Okay. So God laid upon this Play it, wait, give an honor to the house of God. Amen. Give an honor to God who is the head of my life. Amen. Give an honor to my pastor, Amen. William R. Eco. Thank you, sir, for allowing me to preach here. I thank the ministers who are here in attendance. Elder Asai, goodness, Asante Smith. Sorry. <laughs> Minister. Minister Washington. Minister Shamika Ford, Amen. my own Mama Campbell, yes. and I give praise and honor to my parents, Edder Jesse Ephraim, Assistant Pastor Jesse Ephraim, and to my mother Michelle Ephraim. Hey. Last but not least, give an honor to my wife Candice. always encourages me every time I get up here. I shouldn't be nervous, but she does it anyway, since she always says the same thing. Shut up and preach. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Do your job. God laid us upon my heart, too. I wasn't sure what to preach about Mother. Uh, and also, Mother Blackwell, I thank you. Every year I say this, I'll say it again. Thank you for allowing me to preach. For picking me. To preach every year. Thank you. Ooh. All right, I'll just take my pitch down now just because of that. Thank you for allowing me to preach for you. Thank you for the pastor's aid committee.
from picking me yet again. But anyways, I wasn't sure what to preach on. And God laid it upon my heart, I need you to preach about faith. Because too many people who are supposed to be called by my name keeps losing faith too easily. All right. Yes, sir. Come on, faith. Speak about it. So he says, I need you to talk about faith. So I said, anything else? He's like, I said what I said. I'm like, All right. Then. So that's where the topic comes. The main theme is strong faith in uncomfortable places. And he gave me three topics to talk about. The faith to act, then tomorrow is the faith to wait, and then the last day, the faith to believe. So we're going to go to the faith to act. So we're going to open up our Bibles to the book of James. And I'm going to warn you now, if I step on your toes, I didn't mean it. I meant your face. Come here. on. Sorry. Oh, um, book of James. Chapter 2, verse 17 to 20. I'm going to try to be nice today. The book of James, chapter 2, verses 17 through 20. And you already know me. If you have your word, please stand for the reading of the word. And if you don't have it, say, wait a minute. James, chapter 2, verses 17 to 20. 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Right. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Shew me thy faith without thy works, and I will shew thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Mm. And before you take your seat, the topic of today is you can't fake it until you make it. All right. Go ahead and sit down. Now I know there are some people whose faith has been pushed to the limits. It's been tried attacked, stepped on, misused, abused, worn out, and for some it seems to have gone unrewarded. Faith in people has been hindered. Faith in technology has been strained. Faith in friends is still up for debate. Faith in love has been contested and faith in God is a tug of war. But in all these things, faith is one of the most evident, unyielding, but constant spiritual characteristic in a child of God. For when you want to give up on friends, faith says, try again. When you grew tired of love, faith says, have patience. When you feel you're losing faith in God, faith says, be still and know he is God. And he is a God of his word. Faith is many things, but one thing faith is not is idle and lazy. Real faith, someone say real. Real faith enables you to act. Whenever faith speaks, actions follow. There is no lip service with real faith. If you ever want to know who a person is, watch their actions. For action speaks louder than words. They can say they love you, treat you right all day long, but let their action speak for themselves. You will truly know who your friends and loved one is when the chips are down. Because all that phone calls they keep giving you, wait till you get rock bottom. And your phone become as dry as the Sahara Desert. Love and faith goes hand in hand. You can't love someone and not have faith in them. You can't trust a car if you don't have faith. It will bring you to your destination safely. And you won't stay at a job if you don't have faith. It will provide you with a paycheck and a learning experience. 
Faith isn't double-minded. It won't love you today, but hate you tomorrow. It won't trust in God during the day and doubt and worry at the midnight hour. Real faith isn't two-faced. It doesn't show up holy and leave hell in this wake. It doesn't bless with one tongue and curse with the same tongue. Real faith is ever constant. It's a, it's a real friend from the beginning to the end. But it won't let go of God's promises once it receives a promise it stands firm even if it has to stand by itself. Yeah. For faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Real faith is just that. Real. Someone say real. real. It can't be duplicated. It can't be faked. It can't be pushed aside. It can't be used every now and then. And it can't be used whenever you feel like it. You can't fake it till you make it. Having faith means if God says he'll work it out, you stand on his word until it comes to pass without doubt. John 2 and 20 talks about Abraham whose faith in God was absolute but it doesn't mean he didn't have worries or fears how many of you can say if God ordered it I would take my firstborn and sacrifice him mm. I'm sure Abraham had a lot of thoughts and emotions going through him I'm pretty sure he did like why would God ask this of me I can't kill my son. I have to obey God's word, but I have faith God knows what he's doing, but why would you ask this of me? Why would you ask my son to be the one sacrificed for you? But I dare not disobey God. I better obey what he told me to do. So let me ask you this. Can you put God before who or what you love the most? Let me ask that again. Uh -huh. Let me ask you, can you put God before who or what you love the most? Yep. The problem we are facing is about losing, about using our faith as a matter of convenience. And whether you want to trust God or not. And the problem also lies in when he tells you to dip into Jordan seven times, you say, why? why? That's nasty. The, the, the river is dirty, God, and that doesn't even make any sense. God tells you, go and walk around the wall seven times, and you say, Lord, this is ridiculous. I have vertigo. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just bought these shoes. Yeah. I just got my knees done. I'm not dirty in this dress walking across this wall. So let me remind you, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Right. Right. Neither are your ways my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For God will use the foolish things to confound the wise. Even the wise in God are still confounded to this day. When they do something foolish to their understanding. And I'm pretty sure the word does say, lean not unto thy own understanding. But when they do, what the Lord says do, but in the end, it ends up blessing them anyways. Blessings. The blessings isn't in the foolish. It's in the acting. Faith isn't in the deliberating. It's in the pressing. Faith isn't in the watching. It's in the acting. Faith isn't in the complaining. It's in the following. Faith is in the serving. Faith is in the praying. Faith is in the fasting. Faith is in the enduring. Faith is in the displaying. Faith is in the work. Faith is in the believing. Faith is in the obeying. Yes. Yes. I'll pause right there. Yes. Oh, yes. A lot of us have a problem with obeying. Right. Yes. Now I told myself I was not going to pause because God said do it anyway. We have a lot of problem with obeying. Especially when it comes to something that God tells you to do that you do not want to do. So, real faith means that when God says, hold your mouth shut, that means keep it shut. But a lot of us have a tendency to speak our minds anyways. 
and we dare someone to cross us. I'm going to say what I want. I dare you to say anything to me. And God will say, I'm going to shut your lips for you. God will say, I need you to take a step on faith. Put some money on this. You say, God, this is for my rent. I can't do that. I refuse to have my family go without just to put a little money in this man's pocket. God says, I did not say his pocket. I didn't say anyone's pocket. I said, put your money here. Because what your $2 would do, $100 can't even cover. When God says, I need you to have faith and wait, you say, God, I need you to do this in two weeks. I need you to do this because you are, this is what, actually, I'm going to pause again. God says, I need you to wait. I need you to wait on this. You say, no, God, you are an on-time God. You will do this right now, exceedingly and abundantly before all. Oh, I can never ask for a thing. And God says, why are you using my word against me? Like, I didn't write this. Come on, Jesus. If I told you to wait, that means you don't see what I see coming before you. If I told you to act, that means I don't need you to be still. If I tell you to speak, that means this is not the time to be silent. If I tell you to worship, this is not the time to be idle. If I tell you to praise, this is not the time to be weak. If I tell you to hold on, this is not the time to let go. Faith is the one thing that can unlock the door for you. Faith is the one thing that can even unlock the blessing that you are still waiting on. Faith is the one thing that can unlock the keys to your deliverance. Faith is the one thing that the enemy really wants to take from you. Faith is the one thing that pleases God. But it's also the one thing that you seem to have the most problem with. Faith is the difference between drowning and walking on water. Faith is the one difference between burning and living in the fire. Faith is the main thing that keeps you faultless. But faith is the one thing that will keep me from standing. Faith is the one thing that's going to keep me from falling. Faith is the one thing that keeps me from falling into your mess. Faith is the one thing that's going to make me abundantly blessed. Faith is the one thing that's going to make me more than a conqueror. Faith is the one thing that's going to make me the lender, not the borrower. Faith is the one thing that's going to make me stronger than my enemies. Faith is the one thing that's going to bring healing to my house. Faith is the one thing that's going to bring joy to my life. Faith is the one thing that's going to bring access to the word of God. Faith is the one thing that's going to bring my enemies to my footstool. Faith is the one thing. That I refuse to let anyone take from me. Come on. Faith is the one thing that you cannot take. Because with my faith, my joy is intact with it. With my faith, my happiness is attached to it. And like the pastor says, you can't take this from me. I refuse to let you take my faith and my joy away from me. I refuse to let my enemies make me so. I refuse to let naysayers Keep me from happiness. I refuse to let the enemy take my faith from me. You have to kill me to take my faith. You're going to have to destroy everything around me and good luck with that. Because God put a hedge of a protection around me. Good luck with that. But you will never take my faith. For this is the one thing that I fought dearly for. This is the one thing I cried for. This is the one thing I died for. This is the one thing I pray for. And you think I'm going to let you take this from me? You think I'm going to let some loved ones take this from me? You think I'm going to let some false prophets take this from me? Just because I married you doesn't mean you want to take this from me. Just because you're my blood doesn't mean you want to take this from me. Just because I work with you does not mean you want to take this from me. Just because you lent me money when I was starving doesn't mean you can take this from me. I'm not going to allow you or anyone for that matter to take the very thing God gave us life for. Faith didn't come before, but when Jesus died, faith came in. And now that God, that, now that God put his blood on my faith, I got another sermon for a different day. But when God put his blood on my faith, I refuse to let the enemy take this from me. Come on now. 
I refuse to let myself take it from me. Right. Yeah. And I feel a warning, so I'll go ahead and say this now. You need to be careful about what you say in secret places. Yeah. Wow. I don't know what that's for. But be careful about what you say in secret places. Because the enemy will send an agent just to listen to what you say. And he would bury, he would send an assignment just to attack that very thing he just got done speaking got? about. Enemy will take any chance it takes, any chance it gets to test your faith at any moment. If you put your faith in idle things, you gotta be careful. Because idle things can be taken from you. Yeah. If you put your faith in your car so much, the enemy will take it away from you just to see what you do. If you put your faith in your looks for so long, the enemy will take that away from you just to see what you do. If you put your faith in your own actions and your body function, the enemy will take that away just to see what you do. Ask Job. How can you have that much faith when you lost your children in one day? How can you have that much faith when everything you built up from the ground up is taken away? How can you have that much faith when your own spouse says you need to curse God and die? How can you have that much faith when you didn't even do anything wrong? Come on, sir. And yet all hell still breaks loose. How can you have that much faith when your own friends say you must have did something wrong? How can you have that much faith when it feels like the world has turned its back on you? But I remember what the Lord, no, what Job says, naked I came in, naked I shall leave. But blessed be the name of the Lord. When you have real faith, troubles that comes your way will bring you closer to God. When you have real faith, no matter what comes your way, you will stand on the promises of God. When real faith kicks in. Real. When real faith kicks in, no matter what people say, you say, I am still the blessed child of the king. When real yes. faith kicks in, you do whatever the Lord says do. Now I hear him say do it again. So now, I'm going to say this again. The blessing isn't in the foolish, it's in the acting. Faith isn't in the deliberating, it's in the pressing. Someone say press. 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 Faith isn't in the watching, it's in the acting. Faith isn't in the complaining, it's in the following. Faith is in the serving. Faith is in the praying. Faith is in the fasting. Faith is in the enduring. Faith is in the displaying. Faith is in the work. Faith is in believing. Faith is obeying. Faith is humble. Faith doesn't quit. Faith is constant. Faith is trusting. And I'll say this again. You can't fake it until you make it. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. I may not see it, but God, I trust you. I may not understand it, but God, I trust you. I may not know why I'm going through this, but God, I trust you. I may not know why they left me, but God, I trust you. I may not know why I lost this job, but God, I trust you. I don't know why my children are sick, but God, I trust you. I don't know why my body is petting me, but God, I trust you. I don't know why I'm by myself, but God, I trust you. I don't know why I'm sick, God, but God, I trust you. I don't know why I'm poor, God, but I trust you. I don't know why I have no clothes, but God, I trust you. I don't know why I'm in the corner, but God, I trust you. I don't know why I made this mistake, but God, I trust you. I don't know what's going to happen to me, but God, I trust you. I don't know, I don't know what to do, but God, I still yet trust you. I didn't come this far to let my faith fall. I didn't sacrifice too much. I sacrificed too much to let my faith fall. I'm getting what's mine. And I want what's mine. I have to have what's mine. I need to have what's mine. And I'll fight for what's mine. And I'll pray for what's mine. So I say mine. And I will praise for what's mine. I'm going to get selfish with my praise. All right. And I came this far by faith. So, Lord, I trust you. And I refuse to let anyone else tell me otherwise. Oh, I'm yeah. almost done already. Wow. 
Go ahead on. I came this far to give up. I came too far to give up now. If you think about it, look at all the troubles and trials you just went through just to get here today. I know you're right. Every last one of it, all that heartache and pain and distrust and how you put the, the needle in your arm and how you just drug yourself to a stupor, how you just dodged that bullet, how you missed that car accident, how you had to do things on your own, how you had to raise children on your own, how you had to bury one, two, three, four different relatives, how you had to walk out the accident and say, God, you kept me out of that stretch. All the things you went through. Where's your faith at? I don't mean to be so dreary, I'm sorry. But I have to give you what's real. And sometimes it doesn't take shouting, it takes hearing. Oh, okay, hear you. you gotta stop expecting someone to give you a dance sermon. It can be, definitely. Because sometimes you need to actually listen to what God is actually telling you. And sometimes you gotta stop being so lazy with your faith actually put it into use. The word clearly said faith without works is. And last time I checked, everyone in this building is breathing. Last time I checked, God didn't raise dry bones. Last time I checked, God said that everything that has breath, praise ye Last time I checked, faith isn't idle. Faith isn't lazy. Faith isn't confounding. Faith doesn't give you confusedness. Faith doesn't make you disobey. Faith is ever faithful. But faith professes the name of God at all times. And the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my So why do you have to wait for someone to say something spectacular? Why must you wait for someone to like the faith that's already inside of you? Why must you wait to act on the faith that you already have inside of you when you already know what the word says? Why must you wait? You can't wait today and act tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised unto you. You can die tonight. And I, for one, refuse to let my faith go without action. So I promise you, and I tell you people now, you better act on your faith before you lose it. What's the word say? Not the word. It's a phrase. You better use it before you lose it. And there, I can guarantee you this now. I'm closing. There are people now today who wish they was in your position. There's people here today whose faith is hanging by a thread. And all it takes is the word of God that's in you to act on it. And you will bring someone out of a troubling situation. You must have the faith to stand in uncomfortable situations. You use your faith for so long. I'm dipping into another sermon. You use your faith for so long in situations you got comfortable in. So when something uncomfortable comes your way, you don't know how to act on it. Because you've been predisposed to your usual problems. You have usual problems, you have usual solutions to it. But when God brings something unusual to you, you don't know how to act towards it. Your faith has been accustomed to your problem. So now you have to put your faith in an uncomfortable situation. Right. Now you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. You have to put your belief in uncomfortable situations. That whenever it happens and whatever happens, God, I still trust thee. Whether I'm comfortable or not, I have to keep my troubles from being my bad buddy. Oh, come on. Mm. God, you know now. All right, sir. Oh, wait a minute. I'm trying to stop. You have to keep your troubles from coming into your house. Come on. You got to take the keys from your if, from your issues and say, yeah. you're not welcome here no more. You want to lock the door to the problems 
and say you cannot enter here no more. Yeah. Right. You're going to tell your usual issues. This is the last time I spend the night with you. This is the last time I'm going to allow my usual problems to disrupt the works of God. This is the last time I'm going to allow my faith to go comfortable. I need God to make me uncomfortable. I need God to put me in uncomfortable places because when I'm uncomfortable, I move. When I'm in uncomfortable places, I shift. When I'm in uncomfortable places, I rise. When I'm in uncomfortable situations, I praise. When I'm in uncomfortable places, I worship. When I'm in uncomfortable places, I exercise the faith that God put in me. When I'm uncomfortable, that's good, sir. I decide then, God, you have to be the king today. When I'm uncomfortable, praise and worship is all that I do. When I'm uncomfortable, the enemy doesn't know what I'm going to do next. And I prefer that my right hand not know what my left hand is doing. I just did the opposite. It doesn't matter. But I refuse to get comfortable. Anymore. Yeah. All right. So I tell you now, people of God, get ready to be uncomfortable. Wow. I like that. No, I think, think about it. God said, I'm going to make you uncomfortable now. All right, all right. I like that. And I'm going to send something your way you never expected. That's it. And now I'm going to put the ball in your court. I like it. I put faith in you. I'm going to make you uncomfortable until you use it. Get ready to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Let us stand. And I'm done. Amen. Over the next three days, today, tomorrow, and Friday, of course, I want you to really think about where your faith is. Yeah. And I don't care how long you've been a servant, serving the name of God and everything else. Everybody else has troubles. Yeah. The enemy has specific issues and weapons that he made and designed specifically for you to yeah. test your faith. So no one's is exempt from this. I need to really think about where your faith is. And this time, really think about what it is that you want for God to do for you. I think that's a sermon, isn't it? What do you want God to do for you? Yeah. And I dare you to exercise your faith on this. For we're going to be dealing with faith for three days. And by the end of this three days, God said, I'm going to increase your faith a hundredfold. No, that's right. That's right. Amen. I receive it. Amen. And by the increase of your faith by a hundredfold, things that that is attached to you is going to increase a hundredfold with it. But it's not going to increase if you don't act on it. Lord God in heaven, we give you the praise, the honor, and glory. For our faith is only in you. We've been idle for too long. Give us the strength to act on the word of God. Give us the strength to act out on faith. But give us the strength to step out on faith. God, you are the king of our life. You are the king of our salvation. And we thank you for the word that has been spoken on today. Let it manifest within us and let us grow and push us out of our comfort zone. Take it out what is within us that's keeping us bound. Take out what's keeping us chained. Take it out, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let us come into the house of God now with expectations of the unforgettable. Let us come with expectations of the impossible. Let us come with expectations of the uncomfortable. Yes, 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 yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Say, God, I receive it. God, I receive it. Amen. God bless you, everyone. God bless you. Amen.